Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Good morning, everyone, and um, a very warm welcome to St. Saviour's. A particular warm welcome uh, to anyone who's visiting. It's great to have you worshipping with us this morning. And a very warm welcome to everyone who's at home um, watching this uh, with us. Great to have you um, with us, too. We continue this service in prayer, asking God to pour upon us his life-giving Holy Spirit to help us as we gather to worship and praise him. And so we pray. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. Now, if you um, listen very carefully to this morning's um, gospel reading, it's quite a um, difficult reading, quite a challenging and slightly frightening reading. It describes the coming of the Son of Man on um, clouds. Um, it's a sort of slightly um, end of days kind of reading. It's not the reading one wants to write a sermon on when you've just come back from holiday for two weeks. Um, I had to really think about that. And um, it really does kind of speak into uh, where we find ourselves uh, in these days. And uh, as I said, it can be quite troubling, quite frightening, uh, the thought of Christ's second coming. This hymn or this song, which may be new to some of you, is one that reminds us that actually we have a saviour who is deeply compassionate, loving, um, and wants nothing but the best for us. Um, so please do reflect on these words before listening very carefully to the gospel reading. Um, you, we need a balance of the two, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but do enjoy this, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 
Um, I guess the uh, thought of Jesus' second coming, of our um, uh, meeting of him in judgment, is one that brings some anxiety because we all know in our hearts and in our minds that we aren't living uh, the lives that God calls us uh, to live and wants us to live. And so we come to our time of repentance. In a moment's silence, let's just bring into our hearts and minds those things that we know are wrong in our lives um, in a moment's silence before asking God for his help and his guidance uh, to deal with those things. And so we pray together. Lord, our God, in our sin, we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And as God's forgiven people, we stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we stand, so we pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that, through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for our readings. The first reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgive you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading, the Gospel, is taken from Matthew 24, verses 30 to 35. 
the coming of the Son of Man. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, be in my speaking and in our listening, that together we would know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. In Christ's name. Amen. So as um, Alan reminded us at the APCM meeting we had on Thursday evening, we live in interesting times. Or as a recent email that I received from a church leader more dramatically stated, apocalyptic times. Such a description is perhaps less dramatic when we reflect on the root meaning of the word apocalyptic. It comes from a Greek word meaning to disclose or to reveal. And we are certainly in a time of revealing, particularly when it comes to some of the disparities, inequalities and injustices that lie not far from the surface of modern society. Today's gospel reading uh, from Matthew is all about revelation, and it seems to somewhat frighteningly speak into our current world context, and especially when the verse immediately preceding this morning's gospel reading is included. It goes like this. Immediately after the suffering of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. What does it all mean? And does it really have any relevance to what we are currently going through? The biblical scholar Tom Wright rather helpfully compares this passage to an orchestral piece of music in which a short piece of music played by the whole orchestra actually consists of lots of lines of music individually written for each separate instrument that come together to make the whole. He writes... Often in the Bible, there are passages in which several things have come rushing together into one short, tight-packed chord or musical sequence. But in order to understand them, we have to take them apart and allow them to be heard one after the other. Particularly when it comes to prophecy, the biblical writers often spoke of something which sounded as though it was all one event, but which they knew might well be and we know actually was, a sequence of events, one after the other. The tune that this morning's passage from Matthew's Gospel is playing is called The Coming of the Son of Man. And it's a complicated one that needs a closer look at if we hope to understand its meaning for us today. The verse immediately preceding Uh, that reading that I quoted earlier and which frames this morning's gospel comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And for those who read it in the first century, the one thing it did not mean was something to do with the actual sun, moon and stars in the sky. Such language was well-known code for describing a time of huge social and political change and tumult. Matthew intends us to understand that the time of the coming of the Son of Man will be a time when the whole world seems to be in turmoil. 
But what will this coming itself actually be? What will Jesus' royal appearing consist of? To answer these questions, Jesus takes us back to the prophet Daniel with these words. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, in the book of Daniel, this refers not to a downward movement, but to an upward one, with the Son of Man arriving from earth to heaven. His coming is not his return to earth after a time in heaven, but rather it is his ascension, his vindication, the thing that, demonstrate, that demonstrates that his obedience and suffering have not been in vain. Towards the end of this morning's passage, Jesus says, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. So what were the things that took place in that generation that confirmed that what Jesus said were true? Well, firstly, his coming on the clouds of heaven, his resurrection and ascension, which confirmed that Jesus was indeed the Son of Man, referred to in the Scriptures, and God's true spokesperson. Secondly, the destruction of the temple in AD 70 by the Romans and accompanied by great suffering of the Jewish people. In verse 25 of the same chapter from which this morning's gospel reading, reading is taken, Jesus tells his disciples, take note, I have told you beforehand. He pre-warns his disciples of the destruction of the temple and the accompanying suffering so that they might trust that he is a true prophet and hence not be deceived by the odd things others may do to lead them astray in the future. And so, when the temple falls within that generation, it is a sign that Jesus was speaking the truth and that all that the temple stood for had been superseded by Jesus and by his teaching. And finally, Jesus tells us that he will send his messengers and collect his chosen ones from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Following his death, resurrection and ascension, his followers carried the news of his victory throughout the whole world, sharing the truth that Jesus had shared with them, that he was the Messiah, Lord and Saviour of all, even to those like the Gentiles who had been previously excluded from such a hope. All this is spoken to Jesus' disciples so that they might be encouraged. Watch for the leaves on the fig tree, and you can tell it's nearly summer, says Jesus. Watch for these events, and you'll know that the great event, the destruction of the temple and Jesus' complete vindication, are just around the corner. And be sure of this, says Jesus it will happen within this generation. That uh, difficult passage from Matthew is concerned about the destruction of Jerusalem and the events which surrounded it. Beware of those that seek to so easily apply it to the difficult times through which we currently live, as if this were definitely the end of days. For as Jesus himself states, in the passage immediately after this morning's reading. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. But know this too, the God who worked in the first century for the revealing of the truth through the apocalyptic, I struggle to say that word, uh, events of that time is still at work today. He will complete what he began in the first century and bring the whole created order to share the liberty of the glory of the children of God. And this is the challenge that Paul brings to us in this morning's epistle reading. However frightening or difficult 
or uncertain things may be for us today, we are to remember that we have a God who in Jesus has spoken to us the truth. And that truth is that we are God's beloved children. And as such, we are challenged and encouraged in all circumstances to conduct ourselves in a certain way. To be compassionate, kind, humble, meek, patient, to bear with one another, to be forgiving, loving, peaceful, and thankful. It might be hard to be such people in the world in which we currently find ourselves, but God knows the world right now really, really needs people like that more than ever. Amen. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray for your people throughout the world in these difficult days, in these challenging days, when there seems so much change, so much suffering, so much confusion, so many difficult things. Help your people, Lord, to be beacons of light and truth and love. Help your people in all things and at all times to be compassionate, patient, caring, kind, to be something of Christ to all they meet and most especially to all in need. In his name we pray. Amen. And so we stand to uh, confess together our faith as Christians uh, in the words of uh, this shortened creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I keep wanting to say, and now we're going to sing, but of course um, we can't uh, yet. Um, you heard at the end of the reading to um, the church in Colossae um, that Paul encourages his people or the people there to be thankful in all things. And um, one of the, I guess, most damaging uh, things that we are struggling with at the moment is when we hear so much negative news, um, it's hard to be thankful. It's hard to, be, to focus on what's good. And in all of our lives, every single day, there is something good uh, to be thankful for. Um, and it's good and healthy for us to, be, to have those things in mind, uh, not just the things that the news headlines are constantly bombarding us with. So um, this is uh, an older song, which I'm sure many of you know, um, a song that does encourage us to have thankful hearts. So as um, uh, Mike plays it and we reflect on the words, be thankful for the blessings that God pours upon each one of us uh, every single day, and especially in the midst of uh, these challenging times. Mike. <laughs> Thank you. 
So let us now pray for the church, for the world, and for all human need. Now let's pray. Uh, there's a general response in the sheet, so at the end of each section. Father God, we thank you um, that we come before you now with a sense of, I guess with great uncertainty, uncertainty of what the winter will bring, fear of the impact of this pandemic uh, on our own lives, um, our own community, our family, our country, and indeed the world. But Lord, as, as we quiet our hearts before you now, help us to remember that you are our great God, forever unchanging, forever with us, forever dependable, forever our rock and salvation. Lord, may we as individuals, may our leaders, may our church be beacons of hope in these difficult and challenging times. And may we each turn afresh to you, the source of all, and be filled again with your love and peace. Father God, we thank you for our church here in Brockenhurst. And we ask for your blessing upon us and on all the many things that we are trying to do, even in the midst of this pandemic. In particular, Lord, we ask you for the blessing on our plans to start a new Sunday afternoon service once a month. And our plans for Alpha, as we look to introduce those to the Christian faith or those who are maybe trying to refresh their Christian faith. We thank you for the leadership of Simon and we pray that you would give him wisdom and discernment as he leads us. Father God, we pray that you would help us as a church body to grow in faith and to walk in a manner worthy of our great calling to follow you. Enable us to be a community of peacemakers and build bridges both within our church, but also in our local community of Brockenhurst, as we attempt to reflect your love for all those around us. May we hear your still small voice as we meet together today and meet with you every day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We praise you, O Lord, for all that we see of you in the work of creation, the earth, the sea, and sky, and everything that has breath. Heavenly Father, we constantly stare in wonder at the universe you have caused to come into being, and of which we understand just a fraction. In the presence of such power and majesty, we bring you our prayers for our world. You have placed its care and our future in our own hands. And so we pray for a tireless striving for peace between the nations and a common realization of the catastrophic dangers posed by climate change. Creator God, forgive our confusion and inaction and help us to be prepared to play our own part, however small it may be, in sharing the responsibility to change the way we live, to reduce our impact on the beautiful world you have created for us. We pray that you would bless our initiatives here in Brock with the Eco Church. And on the larger scale, we pray for our world leaders to find new, just and radical agreements that will protect our fragile environment for future generations. Hear our prayer, Lord, for those whose lives have been shattered by disaster, be it the pandemic or other natural or man-made disasters or conflict. We ask for your blessing on all those who have lost or are losing their homes, their livelihoods, their security and their hope. And we pray for the work of all those providing emergency assistance. 
Lord, speak to us anew of your concern for the poor and oppressed and our responsibility to work towards a better, fairer and more caring world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray now for all those who are struggling with life, for all in our local nursing homes, for those who are housebound, shielding or self-isolating, for those who suffer from poor mental health, for those who are lonely or who are weighed down and burdened by financial worries and troubles. We pray for all those who are unwell in mind, body or spirit. In particular, we pray for Derek Brown, Pauline Chataway, Graham Owen, Bob Eaton, Clive Turner, Jennifer, Jennifer Duran, Christopher Brown, David Heslop, Jenny Durant, Kate Edgel, and Pam Emery, who is currently in hospital. And in a moment of silence, we lift those others, we lift um, others known to us and who are on our hearts. As we have named these ones out loud in our hearts, so may they experience your comfort, courage and hope in their troubles. And we pray that we ourselves may never neglect any opportunity to offer friendship, help and support. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, you are the resurrection and the life, the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We remember before you all those who have died. In particular today, we remember Alan Booth, Ernest Gilbert, Peggy Bramwell. We pray for all those who feel the pain of grief at the loss of a loved one, whether recent or as each anniversary passes. We pray particularly for the relatives and friends of Herbert Wells, who died just one year ago. Lord, help us to support all those who mourn, both with our prayers, with words of comfort, and with practical help, both this day and in the days and weeks to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have promised to be with us always to the end of time. Help us this week to be conscious of your presence in our daily lives so that we may find peace and joy and strength to serve you and to serve those around us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we gather those prayers uh, together with our own in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We come to our time to uh, share. Normally, we would have uh, coffee and tea and all those kind of things in the hall, but we can't do that now. Um, so we miss, therefore, um, a time to catch up with one another. So has anyone got anything they want to share? I think Leslie has something. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, you will see from your spotlight that um, we're inviting everybody to 
attend a tree planting ceremony outside. But listening to the rain, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is still going ahead, but if it is, you're very welcome. But, but I thought you might like to know a little bit of the history of the reforming of the Mother's Union here in Brockenhurst. Um, it was 35 years ago. Um, back in 1984, Wendy Trundle and myself moved to this village, um, both from different parishes, not knowing each other, and our children came to the Sunday school that was here then, very thriving, and um, the Sunday school teachers invited us to a coffee morning to get to know each other, and that's where we met, Wendy and I. Um, both are Mother's Union members in our own parishes, where we come from. We both asked independently to um, people there, when does the Mother's Union meet and you know, how can we join? And we were told that there wasn't a branch here. There had been, but it had gone into abeyance um, some years back because of the elderly population of the members and they couldn't get a leader. So um, they said, well, why don't you start one? So Wendy and I thought about it long and hard. And in the spring of 1985, um, we had a meeting at my house just to see if there was any interest. And about 15 or 20 people turned up and crammed into my small lounge. And so we thought, well, well yes, it probably was something to consider. So um, we started planning and um, that's how we reformed the Mother's Union, initially meeting in each other's homes and then we moved to the church hall, a meeting on the third Monday evening of each month. It was an evening meeting because we were all young mums with children at school, um, some of us working. And so here we are now, 35 years on, um, with 40 members um, playing an active life in church life here and overseas by our fundraising. Um, we have branches in 84 countries now worldwide and um, through our fundraising here, not only do we support um, projects in this country, um, the main one that we support is the family holiday that Winchester Diocese organise every year, um, which is a week's holiday for families who wouldn't otherwise have one. And we actually have sent a family from our village twice now, um, and, who, and they have been extremely grateful for it. Um, we also send money abroad for, um, to help work projects such as the parenting courses, literacy projects, um, supporting refugees, um, survivors of domestic violence. Um, but as well as fundraising, we do lots of other things here. Um, since 1991, uh, we, a small group of us have been running Little Flame Services, the informal services for the under fives. Um, obviously, we can't do those at the moment, so, uh, but we're hoping to return to them. We've made fiddle quilts for people with dementia. Um, we've helped with baptism and marriage preparation. Um, we've knitted prayer blankets for the christening, um, babies getting christened. And just this week, we've launched a new project, which Diane Webster has, is going to oversee, and that is knitting prayer squares for those in the local care homes and the staff. Um, one of our um, really sort of popular fundraising events is our gift swap for coffee morning, which we have in January. Um, and there's, it's just for people to bring along unwanted things and we, they go out to other charities. So we help charities there. Um, we do posies for the uh, Mothering Sunday, which again this year, sadly, we couldn't do, but hopefully, who knows, next year. Um, what other things do we do? Um, We've had a, a cake off like Bake Off. Um, we've done scarecrow festivals. We've done fun days. We've done a teddy bears picnic days. We've done all sorts of things to help raise funds. But sadly, like most charities, this year has been a very bleak year for that. And um, Mother's Union centrally are having to look at how they can go forward with a lack of the fundraising they, they normally have. So I do ask you to please pray for the future of the Mother's Union, both in this country and worldwide, because this lack of fundraising is, is, is impacting on us as it is with all charities. So if you'd like to know a bit more, please look at the national website or speak to one of the committee or the, one of our members. And um, it's a lovely organization and it does so much. It's based on prayer, so please do pray for us. And if the weather allows, 
please do uh, join us to plant this tree to celebrate our 35 years of the reforming of the branch. Thank you. Thank you. Leslie, Mother's Union do a wonderful um, job. Uh, we will go ahead with the tree planting ceremony. I brought some um, water from the River Jordan, but it might be a bit diluted out there. So, uh, Mike. Just a reminder that we're now at the start of the remembrance season. Some of you may be aware, but maybe not all yet, that a decision has been taken not to hold a service of uh, remembrance at the War Memorial on Sunday the 8th. There will be the service here in this church with up to 60 people, uh, most invited. There will not be uh, a follow-on service or a march to the War Memorial. However, there will be a small act of commemoration on Wednesday the 11th at 11 o'clock. We're only allowed 27 inside the Memorial Garden, so that will be very constrained for numbers. The main reasons for stopping the uh, 8th of uh, November service at the War Memorial are crowd control. Uh, we can get up to 100 to 200 people there sometimes, and uh, there is a real risk, I think, of uh, it's getting a little bit out of control on local rules. And the other reason is that it will be almost impossible, I think, to log everybody who intends so that we have a record of who was there. So I'm sorry about that, but the War Memorial will be open all the time and anybody wishes to go and quietly pay homage there or lay a wreath uh, between times and during the season, please do. So church service on the 8th, War Memorial service on the 11th. Thank you, Mike. Alan and Jean. <laughs> I would like to thank everybody for the beautiful basket of flowers I received on Thursday. Absolutely gorgeous and full of my favourite colours. Thank you very much. And just when you thought you'd heard the last of me, here <laughs> I am again. <laughs> On Thursday, as, you, as some of you will know, at the APCM, I, I uh, finished my term of office as church warden. And you have been just so generous in messages which you've left me, which Ros has kindly put together in a book here, which are very, uh, they, they hit me emotionally, very deeply. Thank you all for your kind wishes and messages. Thank you also for the extremely quite unexpected financial gift that you've given me. Um, we have a new uh, flower bed in our rear garden. So the um, garden centre voucher which you gave us will be put to good use very soon. Uh, and I have need, particularly in this sort of weather, for a pair of waterproof walking boots. So some of the money which you've given me, thank, for which I thank you, will go to a new pair of uh, boots. So for those of you who weren't here on Thursday, um, you may well have picked up by now that Jeremy is my replacement. Jeremy is church warden. Uh, and um, if you'll join with me, I'd just like to say a prayer for Jeremy. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you give each and every one of us. May it fill us and may we reflect your love to everyone we meet. And for Jeremy, Lord, will you please send your Holy Spirit to fill him with courage, wisdom, discernment, and compassion for your people here in this church. May his service bring benefit to us all and be worthy of praise to you for all that you give us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And I should give Alan um, and Jean a round of applause for all that they have given of themselves to us over the years. Well, Alan, thank you very much indeed for that. Um, I really wasn't going to say anything other than to introduce to you, hopefully, all the people that are joining us on Zoom, who we can't normally see. Hopefully, they're going to appear magically here, and then, um, hopefully, magically, uh, they will be able to see us all uh, here. So they are. We could give everybody a wave because they can they can see us in the top left hand corner, and uh, they can also say hello to us. Um, we're also joined by about half a dozen people um, on a telephone. Um, so we've telephoned people that aren't able to use the uh, service here. And uh, we might even be able to hear them if they want to say hello. People like Barbara Frost. <laughs> ah, maybe we could just hear them. Anyway, just so that we uh, can see everybody. 15 people have joined us. So hello to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Wonders of modern technology. When it works, it's fantastic. Um, okay, let's um, have our final song then. Another one reflecting the theme of today's service, um, Jesus is uh, coming. Um, well, it's a well, what more do I need to say? It's a lovely, well-known uh, hymn, normally played in Advent, actually, when we reflect on, on the theme of Jesus' second coming. Uh, and this is going to be played electronically, I think, if the technology works. Otherwise, I'm going to sing it to you. <laughs> you really don't want that. <laughs> Thank you. 
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you love now and always. Amen. Just a few uh, notices to uh, highlight. There's lots um, going on, so do have a look um, at uh, Spotlight. Um, next Sunday at three o'clock, it's uh, All Saints Day, and we're having our service of remembering loved ones departed. If you have a loved one's name that you want to be um, uh, included in that service, in the prayers in that service, then there's a sheet at the back of um, the church there that you can put their name on or contact the church office and just let them know that name and they'll be included um, uh, within our prayers. As Mike said, on the 8th of November, we have Remembrance Sunday uh, service here in church at 9.45. That is uh, by uh, ticket only. So it's not invitation. Um, you're all invited, but you need to contact the office to get your name on the list because obviously numbers are limited and um, we're in danger of just exceeding the safe capacity of the church. So do ring up. Not that many people have contacted the office yet because I think you're all waiting to get an invite or letting uh, other people sign up before you. But do sign up, otherwise we'll only have about 20 of us here who are the ones who have been invited from um, the Royal British Legion and the Parish Council. So if you want to come, just contact the office and get your name on the list. We'll also be um, broadcasting the service out into the grounds um, as well. And of course, on Remembrance Sunday, it'll be a glorious sunny day. So if you can't get in here, you'll be able to listen to the service out there in our field of poppies that we'll be putting out this week. So all of that bottom meadow will become a, a field of poppies, hopefully. That's the intention. Um, year of Prayer um, continues uh, with the uh, uh, pop up uh, talk seminar on uh, um, tomorrow, uh, 26th at 7.30 here at St. Saviour's on reflective prayer. So what we're trying to do is look at various resources that help people to um, uh, perhaps pray more creatively than they have uh, would have previously experienced. So it's a very practical uh, thing. Do come to that um, if you can. And finally, save the date, Friday 13th of November um, for our first church Zoom quiz. It'd be very exciting and good fun. So do join us for that. Good way of uh, meeting together socially uh, in this day and age when it's harder to do. Sue, lift your thing up, otherwise you won't hear a word you're saying. And if you use the mic as well. I just wanted to say that a lot of you who come here to this service every week will have been aware of my nephew and his heavily pregnant wife um, and their little boy. She has been safely delivered of another son whose name is George Wilfred and um, he arrived on Friday. Thank God for safe delivery. Yeah. Six minutes from waters breaking to birth. Whoa. Shucking peas, I say so. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> do, do send them our love. Oh, yeah. Would you please stand? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Christ. Amen.